you know? Uh, we haven't done a Hot Toys figure. We've only done one Hot Toys review at this point. We don't really collect Hot Toys, though. You only have three? I have three. Eventually I have more when they do... Oh. Hello Six again. Eventually. Well... Oh, I know, Batmobile. The Batmobile. Possibly Batwing. No, that's going to be super expensive. The Batwing would be huge. And Mom would not let you buy that. It's going to be so expensive. Mom don't got to know about it. Uh, okay, hello again. If you haven't seen us in a while, that means you only watch our Hot Toys videos. And that's fine. You don't have to watch our Mo2 Classics videos. Uh, in case this is your first video you've seen with us, Blaze, you want to introduce who we are? I am Blaze. Um... Well, I like to say the... What about me? The youngest. <laughs> well, you're the son, so I hope you're the youngest. Uh, I'm James Sawyer, otherwise known as Sala on a lot of forums. This is my son, Blaze. He's a young whippersnapper. Um, he, yeah, I know karate. Uh, you know I'm a karate. Blaze is, what, nine years old? Almost ten. Almost ten. Gonna be ten soon. We uh, are a couple of action figure collectors, two generations of action figure collectors, mm -hmm. and we like to do these video reviews for the Mattel He-Man Masters of the Universe Classics line, right. right? But we decided we would do some other things every once in a while, too, like we did the Hot Toys, mm -hmm. Michael Keaton, Batman, DX09, 12-inch figure. You know, soon you're... Hopefully they keep going with the Hot Toy Batman stuff. I don't know much they could do, though. So... You would not buy them if they did Mr. Freeze plays an Iron No, you I definitely would not. Would not. Buy no. That. Well, hang on. Before we jump onto that, I do yeah. want to talk about that. That's a good thing. Uh, we did the Hot Toys Batman. We're going to do a Hot Toys Christopher Reeve review. And then we'll do some other random things. Like we're going to do the Neck and Ninja Turtles eventually. Um, and some of these things we'll probably post on actionfeatures.net. There's a lot of sites that I'm kind of a part of and Blaze is a part of too. Hey, I'm a, I'm part of Action Features. That's now right. I'm doing these videos. We have motukfigures.com, which is all about the Motu Classics figures. Actionfeatures.net, which is kind of all encompassing comics, toys, movies, all that stuff. My dad and his stuff. friend Mike does podcasts. Yeah. We do the Action Features podcast, uh, and then there's 1989Batman.com, which is where you'll find this video review along with the pictures that go with it. Right. For we've already done the Hot Toys DX09 Batman there. And the Hot Toys DX08 Joker will be there with this yeah. video. So, this video is a 1989.1989Batman.com video spotlight, yes. just like the Batman was. Let's get all that out of the way. Now you know who we are. If you want to know a little backstory on my love of the Keaton Batman films, then you can go to the Keaton Batman review, the right. Hot Toys DX09 one, because we're not going to retread it all here. There's only one thing I want to address real quick. And that's from the last video. Uh, almost everything was positive. It was our most watched video and tons of positive feedback. People really enjoyed the review. Watch, watch this here. We've got something going on here. Uh, but there was one guy that had a, a, a bit of criticism for the video. And he had stated that, uh, that me holding off on showing Blaze the 1989 Batman film until he was 11 was an arbitrary decision, and it was selfish, and it was just for me to get some kind of symmetry between me and my son. And that's fine if you want to have that opinion about it, but the reason I'm actually waiting to show Blaze the 1989 Batman film until he's 11, like I was, is because the movie's kind of dark, you know? And 11 years old is a good time for it, because you're getting from a kid into a teenage years, you can understand more, you can appreciate more. But also because I wanted to turn this into an experience, like it was for me when I was a kid. My parents had made this kind of this calendar, and they'd circled a special day for me and my sister. And we didn't know what we were going to do. Uh, we didn't go see... What's, go ahead. Your sister was looking forward to it? Yeah, we both were. We didn't know, have any idea what was going on. There was a special day written on the calendar, and, it, and my parents, it was weeks in advance of what we were going to do. They said, you're just going to have to wait, you know, and be good, and all these different things. They would mention every once in a while, like, oh, I wonder what your special day is going to be all about. And we were so jazzed. And this wasn't a thing. When we were kids, we didn't watch movies as much at the theaters. Right. And we're going to get into the review. I, I know. If you want to fast forward the video, go ahead. Um, so we didn't do it as much back then. So did your sister, like, want to watch the Batman movie kind of She thing? did. She did want to see the Batman movie. She was talking about it and wanted to see it, too. Uh, but we didn't know that's what it was. Right. But we got to that special day, and we they had us. My dad drove this big pickup truck with this cab on thing on the back, and they had us like, kind of lay, lay down in the back, so we didn't see where we were going. It was it was so crazy. And then I remember my mom hitting the back window, and us looking up and seeing 
the drive-in sign for Batman. And we were both like, we're seeing Batman! And we saw Batman at the drive-in, and the sound went out like halfway through, a little over halfway through the movie, but it was still an amazing experience. Um, so I wanted to kind of replicate that with Blaze and have him have something to look forward to only and something that he wouldn't forget. Only if they could re-show it in the drive-in. Only if they could re-show it in the drive-in. Uh, so I, but it's tough to do that, like you're just saying, it's tough to do that with a movie on a DVD. But we're doing it this way by leading up to it and saying, we're going to see this when we're this time, and I, I'm not going to show it to you till then, and we're going to have this experience that you and I have together, that hopefully when he's my age, he'll look back, like I'm looking back at my time with my parents back then, and remember this movie for more than being just a movie, but an experience with his, his dad. Right? Okay. So, that's why. So if you don't like it, I'm sorry. But that's what we're doing. Right? Okay. I like it. So, well, enough about all that stuff. Yeah. Let's talk about what you guys came here for, and that's the <laughs> DX08 Hot Toys Joker Video Spotlight. Now, we didn't know this when we did the Batman, but all the DX boxes are like this. So they have, like, the picture on, like, the front of the character? I think so, yeah, and it's shaped like this and it opens with these magnet things and all that stuff. We didn't know that, but a couple of nice people pointed it out to us and said, oh, they're all like that. So that's why so they did Superman the box like that. Superman wasn't a DX. Superman was not a DX. Um, the other boxes seem kind of cool too, because they have like that. Well, I think they went above and beyond with Superman's box. I don't think a lot of them are like that. Right. But again, like I, I said, like I said in the Batman video, I'm really a Hot Toys newbie. I don't right. really collect a lot of Hot Toys. These are between the Batman, the Joker, and the Superman. That's it for my Hot Toys. And then there's going to be more like Penguin Cap. Oh yeah, let's touch on that really quick. I promise we're getting into the toy. Just give us a second. I will get all the Batman Returns stuff. I'll right. get Batman, I'll get Penguin, I'll get Catwoman. I'll even do Max Shrek if they, if they make Who's count. Max Shrek? You have to wait. Uh, I'm going to get the Batmobile. Once they move on, if they ever did the Schumacher films, which are... No. I would buy Riddler and that would be it. Because I think Jim Carrey's Riddler is the only thing that's even passable in those films. And Dark Knight, they went way too far, Sting. Oh, they, they do Dark Knight stuff. They do. They do Batman Begins a Dark Knight. Oh. You haven't really seen Dark Knight. You're just saying that because I don't like it. Yeah, I know. But... Hey, the Scarecrow looks like a cool design, kind of. Well, yeah, if you, could, if you don't like it, that's fine. It's just not my preferred version I, of Batman. No, I just like the design of Scarecrow. Yeah, I mean, it's an okay design. And uh, they did a Hot Toys figure of that. Um, we can, wait, I'll, t I'll show you pictures of them tonight, if you want to see them. Okay. Or unless it's your bedtime. Then it'll have to be tomorrow. All right. Okay, so the interior of the box is purple as opposed to Batman's yellow. There's a little write-up on Joker inside here, and in place of the bat symbol you had with the Batman figure, what do you got here? You want to hold that up? Well, that's, that's cool. That's really cool. I'm looking through his face right now. The Joker logo is awesome. I was really hoping they would do something like this with his, so I'm glad to see it, it there. Um, I would really like it if both Batman... Oh, I need it back! Um, I would have really liked it if both the Batman and this Joker would have came with standard bases... That had kind of these logos on them. I think it would have been really cool, but I'm not complaining. But I have to see something. Yeah. Maybe if you shine like the little lights on that stand and from the, behind this, maybe. I don't think they'd be bright enough, the lights from the yeah. stand. And they're kind of small. They're kind of tiny. They're meant just to light up the figure. So this panel is removable, just like on Batman. And the quote on this one is Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Uh, underneath here is the purple covering. And then you've got your figure. Underneath the purple covering is the extra hands, two extra pegs for the wrists, the hat, some silica gel. You lift this entire panel up, and underneath there is all your accessories, the instructions, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. We don't need to go into all that again. So there's the box. Very nice. This box Very nice box. Is so cool. Now we're going to move, like we did last time, and kind of move up towards the figure, mm -hmm. right? Um, we'll start with the base. It's got the same yellow bat logo that the Batman base had. People Some people don't like it. What do you think about it? I like it. I think it's fine. I've seen cartoons mess that up. Not the filmation ones. No, the filmation one messed it up. Oh, uh, no, I haven't seen the filmation Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know if you have. I have no idea that they even made filmation you didn't, you didn't know filmation did some superhero stuff? No. Yeah, they did some superhero stuff. Well, I saw Scooby-Doo Batman, because Keenan's obsessed with Scooby-Doo. Oh, fun. yeah. It was fun for me, though, because I like Batman. That's what I'm And he likes Scooby-Doo. And so it's kind of the perfect show for both of us. It really is the perfect show for both of you, because he loves Scooby-Doo and you love Batman. And so I noticed they messed that up. They flip of. it a lot. And the Scooby-Doo Brave and the Bold episode, like... You know, the... I you should, know, keep going, I keep going. Go no, no, please, please, go ahead, go ahead. No, no there, you're not killing them hanging. Okay, well, the bat might... I don't think I should do No, do it, do it, dude. Batman 
and Brave and the Bold. Batmite Presents episode. The Batmite Presents episode. They were. They had this little short Scooby Doo. Um. I'm listening to you, dude. Scooby Doo Batman thing. Short thing on Batman and cool. Brave and the Bold. And then so like they were like they did a few things that were kind of like um the original cartoon the bag. The bad guys were Joker, Penguin, and then, like, they... I don't... Th it's fine. Keep going, dude. I'm not making fun of you. And then, like... <laughs> <laughs> Can we finish it off for you? No. Okay, you'll get through it. You'll okay. make it through. Well, okay, the... <laughs> oh. Okay, so... He's got it together, and he's going to finish it off. Sorry. He's got it together. So Batman pops up and points out that... He points he points out that the symbol's been fl flipped, and he's not really too happy about it either. No, when, he's not. No, seriously, when he pops out, he's like, Do you notice how they suck? Yeah, he's angry about it. He doesn't yeah. like that they flipped it all the time. I thought he was supposed to be a bad guy, too. Batman's weird. He's too tough to explain in this video. Okay. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so also they flipped it a couple times in the Batman Animated Series. So let's just pretend they flipped it, or something. I don't know. But I don't really mind it that much. I think it's fine. I can understand kind of why they did it, because it's a raised symbol, so it would have been kind of weird to raise it and then put the yellow underneath. Yeah. It's, it's just a base. It's not a big deal to me. Just like Batman's, it lights up. It's got these little turning light things in the front. And it's also got his nameplate up front, the Joker MMS DX. And it takes, I think, three AAA batteries. Slide out a little bit. Oh, it well, it, it's just, on these hot toy stands. They go up and down, and they go sort of in between like the legs. Doll stands. Yeah, but the, um, the doll stands usually clip around the waist, and Hot Toys does it in between the legs. Okay, let's do accessories, and then we'll move on to the figure. He's got a cane, just like he had in the museum scenes. He's got a bunch of hands. I really should have the hands before the cane. But it's not a big deal. No, just put it on over there. He's got a bunch of extra hands. Uh, he's got, a t including the hands that are on him, he's got a total of three left hands and five right hands. I don't know why they didn't do full sets this time and did one more right than they did left, but that's no big deal. And you got a lot of options to display him with. He's got these jazz open hands. jazz hands, or magic hands, whatever you want to call them, high five hands, paper hands. He always plays paper. Uh, they all have these flipped over cuffs that are really nicely painted and sculpted with a little bit of like rough detailing and things. And there's sew lines in here. Really nice sculpts on these hands. Um, as I said before, you get two extra little peg things to plug into the hands for the wrists. And these are important because it's a little tough to switch his hands, and I'll show you why in a minute here. Uh, so choose your two favorite extra hands and put these in here permanently. Because if you're going to be doing a lot of switching out, these pegs are handy. Which one's in fact, your favorite? Um, I chose just like a couple of open hands, and then I chose one that can hold like a gun, and then the one that's kind of pointing so you can kind of hold his cane with it. I think I'm going to go online though and try and find some of these extra ball joint things and put them inside these extra hands to make it easier for switching. Because these little tiny pegs that fit into the hands, it's kind of tough to get them off of there. You're right, Dabba? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you're right? Mm -hmm. You got a cough or something? Yeah, it was my throat. Are you you want to do a quick cough? No, I don't. I'm not gonna make myself. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's the jazz hands, and he's got sort of a pointing right hand that can fit the cane in there kind of well. Uh, he's got a sort of relaxed left hand and a relaxed right hand to match that. The ones that are kind of just like this. Uh, this one's got more of a grip to it, and I think it would hold maybe his megaphone. Well, let's find out. Yeah, that holds the megaphone pretty well. Um, can I do my laugh in the uh, megaphone? Sure. I'll have Joker hold it for you. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty bad. Pretty, no, pretty okay. You also have a sore throat. I've heard you do better on your Joker. You have? Yeah. I don't remember ever doing another Joker. I've heard you do a Joker laugh before when you're playing in the other room. But that brings us to this accessory, the megaphone. It's solid orange just like the film. There's not a lot to it because there's not a lot to it in the movie. Uh, and then the hands that I have in his uh, hands right now, which I don't think were the ones that came on him, are sort of a, a more tighter gripped right hand and this kind of right, uh, left hand where it looks like he can hold like the money or maybe his card in between here or the, the cane, something like that. 
Uh, we've looked at the, we already said he had the cane. Let's put these guns. I'm going to hold off on the guns for just a second. He's got his walkie-talkie and his little activation device um, that he uses in the parade scene and afterwards to call up to the helicopter. Um, they're both painted well. The antennas do not move in and out, so I don't think they're going to. Um, no, they're there? detailed well. Yeah, you would break them. I, I'm a little worried about me breaking them, just hanging on to them. He's got both of those. He's got some chattering teeth which are on a spring. They've got a little white dial on along the side, but it doesn't do anything. Uh, don't try and twist it, because you'll break it. And they move in and out, and they pop back open for Why the spring. Why do you break cool stuff on this? Well, they're hot toys. You know, they're meant for adult collectors. So are the human toys. These are really meant for adult collectors, though. He's got two fat stacks of cash. Uh, they're all $100 bills. They're printed really well. They look like bills that would have been available back in 1989. They come wrapped up. I am not going to unwrap mine, because I don't want these little bills all over my house. So there's Wait, those. Can I actually point something out? Sure. Going back to the chattering teeth, yeah. Joker kind of had these a lot. Like you can kind of see these when you're looking at Joker, because I'm not sure if he had them in the animated series at all. But I think he, I think he used chattering teeth at some used, point. Okay, he might have used that in the animated series. He used it in the um, Batman Arkham Asylum game. Awesome game, by the way. But. Yeah. You, and you you can throw your bat and get them for extra points or something. That's one of the Riddler challenges, I think, to destroy a bunch of chatter teeth. I don't know. Uh, okay, so then he's got also this orange gas mask, and that can fit over his face. Um, and it actually kind of rests on there, which is nice. He This is also used in the movie for another person, but I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, but it's really, it, it's, it looks nice, and I, I, I just noticed, just when I did that, that it kind of just, well, now it doesn't want to do it. It wanted to sit on his face just fine a second ago, and now it doesn't want to do it anymore, so it'll, oh, there it goes. So it can get, kind of just sit on there, or you can use it in his hand to hold it over there. He's got that, and then he's got his squirting flower. And we're going to talk about this coat in a second here. But the squirting flower can either clip into the little threaded spot on his lapel, on the lar larger jacket, because he's got his green handkerchief on his ha hand, in his pocket there. What's that? Handkerchief. 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 Okay. His hanky. Uh, it can go. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going now. Uh, it can go there on him on, on the little hang on the lapel. The instructions say on the tailcoat version of the coat that it's supposed to plug and clip into his pocket. Now, if I remember right from the film, he actually wears it on his lapel during the m uh, museum scene though. So you can actually clip this over the lapel. There's not a spot to hang it from. There's a little stitch spot, but it doesn't actually have a clip in spot there uh, for the clip to hang on to. But you can clip it onto the edge of the lapel and it holds just fine. You know what's cool about like that kind of movie? You can notice kind of changing stuff throughout the movie. Yeah, there's little things that change from here to there. Um, and sometimes that's continuity errors and other times it's meant to be there. So there's that. Then he's got two guns. He's got the long final battle with the Batwing type gun, and then he's got a shorter bang gun. Now, the longer gun has what? This. No, I mean, the, what's the, the difference between these? Exactly. You know, I actually have a question about the guns. Well, hang on, let me tell them about the difference real quick. The longer gun is very shiny, it's a gloss paint, whereas the shorter gun with the bang is a flat paint. It looks real like metal. Now, I think that the long gun was shiny in the film, so that makes sense. What were you going to say? Before I move so, on does these? the bang gun just, like, pop out and go bang? Or does it actually shoot bullets? Well, that, that's a good question. He does the bang gun in the movie. And now, I, in the movie, he snaps down the barrel of this longer gun. And it makes it almost to almost a normal-sized gun. And then, later on in that scene, he uses a bang gun. Now, it's possible it's two different guns, or it's possible that it is the same gun. But the reason I think that they made this gun in a flatter color that looks like a real gun is because you could take the bang out and have his standard revolver. Oh, uh, so it's a real gun. It's a real gun, yeah. Really? It may be two different guns in the film, that there's a bang gun and then there's his gun that shoots uh, regular bullets. Mm -hmm. um, so it's cool that they give you this option. In case you want to display him with a regular gun, you just take the little bang symbol out and you're good to go. Both of these guns, I know you're getting tired, dude. Both of these guns have a barrel that flips out, and you can look at the bullets, and the hammer pulls back on them. It's kind of delicate, so be careful when you're doing it, but it's cool that it's on there. Those things spin around, too. Yeah, they spin around, and you can look at the bullets inside. Um, the coat. 
He comes with an extra long coat because Joker, as you know from the film if you've seen it, has both the sort of tail coat version and the full trench coat version. Now the trench coat really I think is supposed to go on over the tails coat in the film. I think that's the way he wears it. Um, but this is a little too snug and small to get it on over the tails coat. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to take off the tails coat and put this one on if you want the button. I think you can get it on there um, if you wanted to, but I don't. I think it's too small to button it. I haven't actually put this coat on him, so this is kind of an adventure for me right now. But you can get it on over there, but I think it would look way too bulky and big. Um, so you're going to have to switch it out. That over there. Um, this coat has a bendy wire inside, and he comes with this coat on. So you can get a little posing out of the tails. You know, like the wind's blowing the tails on his coat or something like that? You alright there, bud? I didn't know Batman killed. No, no, he just lost a hand. It's not a big deal. Hey, let me lend you a hand. Um, uh, so, no, there was, a, there was a gnat that just buzzed me. Uh, it's going to be warm weather. you got to watch out for those gnats. Uh, okay, so I've just shown you I pulled off a hand. In the instructions, it's there's, he's wearing this white undersuit, like this white nylon suit over his body. I don't know how far it goes because I haven't... He's got socks on. It doesn't go all the way on his legs. Well, he's a regular human. I did not think that. I thought it was really, like, all over the place. Why not? Well, the figure's not. I think a lot of people wanted his figure to be molded in white and not to have this white undersuit. But I'm pretty sure he's not fully painted white in the film. He does wear a white undersuit when he shows his sleeve and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's some precedence to this being a white nylon undersuit. But in the <laughs> instructions, they want you to actually... You right, bud? Yeah. They want you to actually put this ball thing underneath the white, which is almost impossible to do. There is a little opening, though, that you can kind of get the little edge, the peg into, that is to do the switch. That is kid's toy. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you would be able to get that ball underneath there every time, underneath the white nylon suit. But you can make it so you just get that little peg in there. It's good to go. You alright there, Bob? Yeah. Everything okay? You want to rub and get a drink while I'm still going? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so I'll keep talking while Blaze is getting a drink. The Both the purple jackets, something to watch out for is they pick up dust. Or not dust, but like little pieces of fuzz. And uh, If you have a cat, it would pick up cat hair. They pick up fuzz really easy, so be careful when you sit these down on a blanket or if you're um, if you got cats in the house or dogs, because these things pick up hair like crazy. You might want to invest in a little lint roller if you're gonna have these on display. The uh, oh, the last accessory I want to talk about is the hat. A lot of people don't like the hat. I'm kind of in the same boat that I'm not hugely happy with the hat. I, I wish like it was a little hat. better. I know you like the hat, and it looks good when it's sitting on display. I just think that it could be a little nicer quality than what it is. It's made of a very thin, plasticky material. It's it's really thin. Oh, by the way, sorry that took so long. I was trying to get a drink, but it kind of just poured all over my face. Well, that happens sometimes. You got a drinking face. problem? Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of, there was like carnival toys when I was a kid that were like these thin, like Tweety Birds and things like that. And they were covered in flock, and they were made of this kind of thin, plasticky, hollow material. That's what this material feels like, and it shouldn't feel like that. This should have been just a fully, like, sculpted plastic hat. That's okay. Okay, I'm just starting to think that. Exactly. You know, I still like the hat. I, I still think it's fine. I think it looks really good on him. I just think that the material is kind of poor, and when the hair was sculpted, obviously, for the hat, that the more detail should have been put into the hat. And we have a few more things to show about him, or...? Oh, yeah, we still got a couple yeah. more things to show. Um, I just wanted to address that, because we are covering all the accessory yeah. stuff. It's not a deal breaker by any means. I think he's still a fantastic figure, but if there's one gripe I have about the figure, it's the hat. And the fact that the hair was sculpted to fit this hat that is just not as high quality as everything else included here. So let's talk about that head sculpt. Uh, it's done for the hat. The hair is, is done for the hat. It should be a little fuller if he doesn't have the hat on, but it still looks great. I mean, there are certain angles where maybe it looks a little slick to the head, but there's no denying this is Jack's Joker. It looks fantastic. Pictures really don't do this justice. When you see this in person, it's just a phenomenal head sculpt. There is just so much detailing to the face, and it almost looks like it's white makeup laid upon regular skin. Uh, there's wrinkle lines and just a beautiful sculpt. Some folks have complained that maybe the neck's a little too long, but if you pull up a little bit on his, his shirt, you can get some of that neck covered up if you really don't like it. Okay. I don't like it that much. You're being a little insultive to giraffes here. Yeah, don't insult giraffes. Yeah. They got long necks too. 
His uh, hair is sculpted with a, a small ridge line in it, and that's where the purrs system yeah, is. Yeah, I was hit. about to mention that. Um, we, we looked at purrs on Batman. You want to hold on to that? Yeah. The little mechanisms move back and forth, and the eyes move around. And Blaze, you mentioned before that it's great for him because he can do a lot of more of these crazy eye looks. Oh, uh, that looks like something the Joker would do with that eye. Yeah, doesn't it? Wait, can I see that again? Sure. Yeah, it looks like something Joker it's, would do. This purr system is, I think it's better on him than it was on Batman. Batman There's, has a little, um, thinner knob, too. Does he? Yeah. I don't remember. I guess they have more room, maybe because of the hair, to fit it in. Uh, right, well, we got a Batman right here. Oh. Here's a thinner knob. You're, well, you're right, the knob is there. Man, you're really perceptive. I didn't notice that at all. Uh, the, it's hidden better than it was on Batman, too. Um. Because the hairline is able to hide a lot more of that line. You can still see the seam sort of from the back. From the front, I mean, there's no seeing it really. I remember that from January, too. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. Uh, so the head sculpt, I have zero complaints. I think it's a phenomenal head sculpt. Perhaps the best head sculpt I've ever seen on a toy. Yeah. Although I love the, the Keaton Batman. I think the Keaton Batman's great. This is phenomenal. Just phenomenal work. Uh, his suit, somebody's calling us on a house phone. I know, I hear. That's weird. Hmm. Nobody ever calls our house phone. Uh, his suit is really well tailored. Uh, it comes with multiple pieces. He's got his socks and plastic shoes. He's got his plaid pants. He's got a green vest. And then he's got, underneath the green vest, are a pair of suspenders. He's got an orange shirt. He's got the green tie. The green tie, I think, could be a little, little tiny bit better. I wish the knot was a little nicer and cleaner. But overall, I'm, it's a minor, minor nitpick. I did notice one thing on my orange shirt that has a couple of snags in it, right out of the box. Like Superman's suit picks up snags, this orange shirt can pick up snags, so be careful. Oh, um, yeah. I actually have to say something. Yeah. yeah. Me and I'm just kind of a bad luck when you're gone. The phone rings, like, all the time when you're, like, at work. Oh, yeah? Weekends or something. <laughs> They'll ring a lot. Yeah, just throw that in there. Okay, yeah, okay, I just did. <laughs> I just did. You just did it. It's done. You threw it in there. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, well, what were we talking anyway, about? Anyway, back to Joker. Uh, so his body is is a true type body underneath here. I think that's what they call it. Um, but in order to get that jack physique, he's got sort of a, a little bit of padding going on. He's got this kind of suit on underneath here that gives him a little bit more of a paunch than the body would have without it. And it works, I think, incredibly well. Yeah, um, I know something about the timber and... Michael Keaton Batman movie. Mm -hmm, yeah. The pants are a little bit different from what a regular Joker's would You're, be. It has the little green lines and stuff that's like That's because Jack Nicholson likes plaid. When they were making the film, the, the wardrobe guy was saying, oh, well, he's all about purple and pinstripes and things like that. And Jack said, well, I really like plaid. And so they tried these plaid pants out, and I think it looks great. It's a great thing for Joker to yeah. have is these plaid pants. Um, phenomenal figure. I think we're getting to the end here. Um, can you think of anything else we have to address actually on the figure? He's incredibly well articulated. I mean, we don't have to worry about the rubber suit this time. Do you want me to hold one of them? Sure, yeah, definitely. Which one do you want to hold? Batman. Okay. And we can show them together. Yeah, we show them together. So there's Batman with Joker, the two of them that together. That's cool. Uh, this is a dream come true. I've dreamed of this for 23 years, to have these, these two nice figures standing together like this, and now I've got it. Uh, and I couldn't ask for a better company to have so this, nice. because this is phenomenal work. Um, I didn't put his purse all the way back on. Uh, as to which one is better, I don't know. Which one do you think is better? I'd have to say Batman. You know, I would have to say Batman too. Even though I think that the head sculpt is better on Joker, I think the overall figure itself is Batman. I mean, he's just... The cape's perfect, the suit's perfect. Everything about him is perfect. Whereas there's a couple of just very, very minor, minor nitpicks I have on Joker with the hat thing and the hat hair. Still a phenomenally good figure. I know I've said it like four times, that word phenomenally. But there's no other way to describe him. He's fantastic. Exactly what does phenomenal mean? It means this. Ah, it means Joker. This is what phenomenal means. Uh, so that'll wrap it up. Um, so it means Joker, but not the Dark Knight Joker. It just means the Jack Nicholson Joker. Yeah. The Hot Toys Jack Nicholson Joker. That's what it means. If you look it up in the dictionary, uh, you might see a picture of that figure under phenomenal. Uh, you need it if you're going to have the Hot Toys Batman, yeah. Keaton Batman. I mean, Nicholson got top billing in the movie. You can't get a Keaton Batman figure and not get the Nicholson Joker. Duh. 
Alright, so go buy it and be happy about what you did. Um, is that it? This has got to be like 30 minutes by now. I don't know if they'll stick Sorry, it out. They probably won't stick it out. Sorry, I'm just showing my Abraham Lincoln pose. Your what? Abraham Lincoln pose. Abraham Lincoln pose. <laughs> okay. Alright, so... I was thinking of if we had anything else to mention either. Too. I think that's it, man. Uh, these are a dream come true for me. I'm so happy to have them. And I'm telling you guys right now. I'm going to say this. When the Batman Returns yeah. figures come, when the Hot Toys Batman Returns happen, yeah. I'm going to wait for my pre-order. Now, I'm saying that right now. That way you can call me out on it later on when I go back on that and buy them early off eBay again. <laughs> All right. Wait, no, no, no. I don't see the card over here. Did you give me it? I probably sat on it. Again? I probably sat on it. No. Oh, he, well, he had a playing card. Did you put it in the, the thing? Oh, yeah. we did miss something, didn't we? Well, okay, he also came with a playing card, which I've now lost somewhere. Yeah, hey, it's around you there, said so you lose it. I said I'd lose it. I said I was going to lose that. Promise. I kept, kept my promise. promise. Well, he comes with a little Joker card, and it comes all wrapped up in a piece of plastic, mm -hmm. and somehow I've lost it already. Uh, I have one minor gripe about that piece, and it doesn't have the bullet hole through it, which Jack's lucky deck had a bullet hole through it. That's minor. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys uh, next time when we get another Hot Toys figure. We'll do Christopher Reeve's Superman, I promise. We're going to do it soon. Yeah. All right. See ya. See ya. We kept you too long. We're sorry. Too long. We'll see you guys. Yeah, bye. Bye.